All righty, ladies and gentlemen, my first ever dynamite review right here on the new Wrestling Jesus channel. Subscribe today, folks. The go home show for full gear. The fans in attendance should have stayed home, folks. Stay home. Um, voice match Daniel Bryan versus Rocky Romero. Um, I've seen this Rocky Romero a couple times, I think. I've seen the name at least. Apparently, he wrestles in New Japan, or he used to, I don't know. According to the commentary, he was a part of Rapongi Vice. I mean, jeez. Rapongi Vice? <laughs> and basically, he's a midget, folks. He looked like he was even shorter than Daniel Bryan, you know what I mean? Brian had a technical wrestling match with this guy there. And it felt like it, it felt long, folks. That's what it felt like there. It started feeling long. I started thinking about other stuff. And, you know, it was hard to concentrate on this midget match or whatever. I like Brian there, but... It kind of looks like Brian lost his smile, folks. Like they say, literally, he doesn't smile anymore because he's trying to be some kind of indie MMA guy <laughs> with this dragon gimmick, whatever. There he comes out. And then he does like a little smile to try to get cheers a bit. Then he goes back into serious mode, like. The Daniel Bryan smile was a big part of who he was in WWE, you know what I mean? The crowds would fucking cheer big time. All he did was smile and look at the crowd. In AEW, for some reason, he doesn't want to smile. You know, he comes out and he chooses to look serious. And to be bland, basically, as a personality, I don't know. But the match was okay, I guess. But like I said, I started, you know, losing interest in the finish. Brian caught him in some kind of leg maneuver. Then he kind of loses the grip. And that's when the other guy taps, you know what I mean? So he, he has him in position for this submission. He loses the grip. That's when the guy taps, so it's like bocce. And then Brian pulls him back to in the submission, you know, but the guy already tapped kind of deal. Like, who tap? Oh! This is real wrestling. Cheat. Um, the inner circle were coming out. Tony Schiavone introduced them. And then Dan Lambert and his group of men attacked the inner circle there. Um, uh, Dos Santos, he gives a big punch to Sammy Guevara or something. They go in the ring. They set up Jericho on the top rope with Lambert holding Jericho in, in the power bomb position. And the three three people basically put Jericho through the table. The two wrestlers put Jericho and Lambert just jumped along with Dan there, but it was okay there. And then Lambert gives him the Boston Crab and he was talking shit. And so Lambert did a good job or whatever. This was an okay segment. 
Second match, Ty Conti, Anna Jay, and Thunder Rosa defeated Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, and Rebel. And this was like not a good match, you know what I mean? Not a good segment or whatever. Um, I think it was Jamie Hayter. She had Anna Jay by the hair or whatever, and then Anna Jay... Like, she just let go of the hair, she takes a few steps, then she's like this, and then she pulls back, she walks backwards, so that the girl grabs her again, that looked very bad, like, a big miscommunication thing, I don't know if Rebel was off, but... Even Jim Ross commentated on Rebel, saying she looked un unstable or un he said something there and it's true she looked pretty off and out of shape in this match there but big botch thing that happened here and then you had jungle boy versus anthony bowens and the rapper guy came out before this match and pretty much buried Jungle Boy that he can't cut promo and he needs to work out kind of deal. Like, the rap was funny, I guess, but it kind of buries Jungle Boy a little bit there. But Jungle Boy defeats Anthony Bowens. It was an okay match, I guess. And then Bobby Fish turns heel, folks. And attacks Jungle Boy, big Bobby Fish attacked, ladies and gentlemen. And Chris Chin came out and Fish was walking away with his biker face there. What's the matter? What's wrong? He was like talking shit to Chris Chin. I didn't laugh, but I was like <laughs> a little bit there. And then Bobby Fish was backstage with Adam Cole and the Buck said the EW is all about the elite and the super click and if Adam Cole vouches for him then it's he's cool or whatever and then Adam Cole asked Bobby Fish to fight Jungle Boy on Rampage there so Bobby Fish turns heel, probably better for him to be a heel there. Not that I give two fucks about Bobby Fish, folks. He looked better as a heel. More interesting anyway there a little. Not much more interesting, but um, I guess he's going to be like a henchman for Adam Cole. Basically the same shit he was doing on NXT there. It's an innovative company, folks. Fort match, Wardlow squashed Wheeler, Utah, that little jobber there. And there was another big botch. He tried to do a jump, but he slipped and it looked horrible. And even Jim Ross commented, but he said it's because he was wearing sneakers <laughs> in the ring. He said if you wear sneakers, that's going to happen or whatever. Just a throwaway garbage match there. A two-minute match. They can't go two minutes without botching. Like. And then Hardy came out with his buddies. They attacked Orange Cassidy. He gave him his finish with the chair across the, the throat there. Um, they have a pay-per-view match in two days, so the big chair across the throat finish thing isn't going to be sold there. Why even bother doing it? Um, and later on in the program, Jim Ross referenced the sneakers again. Oh, well, these men aren't wearing sneakers here. So you can tell Jim Ross wasn't happy with this horrible, stupid botch there. And then you had Punk and Eddie Kingston in the parking lot, folks. Being restrained or whatever. Apparently something happened during the break. A big thing happened. 
during the break, we're not going to show you there. Basically, nothing happened. They're just a, a pull apart kind of deal there. Um, Eddie tried to run with his fat body and he was stopped there. So basically, fuck all happened. We're going to keep the cameras backstage in case something happens. And nothing happened there after. Very fun. <laughs> you know, maybe do a little brawl in the parking kind of deal. I don't know. Just two men being separated. <laughs> How many good things have we seen in the parking? At least WWE can put on a good parking lot brawl even to this day. There, People get passed through windshields and... Fucking doors getting slammed on people. Not as often, but it still happens. Damn, a little pull apart. Eddie Kingston running five seconds until he's out of breath there. Fifth match, Leo Rush and Dante Martin defeated Matt Seidel and Lee Moriarty. That little skinny random goofball with a mask apparently is the protege of Matt Seidel. Like, I, <laughs> Matt Seidel teamed up with this random guy. Just get rid of him, fuck, or use him as a comedy guy, I don't know. Every week, have Seidel come out and he gets a pie in the face, or it would be better than whatever the fuck you're trying to do with him there. Um, apparently, Dante Martin is the protege. Uh, Lee Moriarty is a protege. Leo Rush, a five foot five, eighty pound man, he's a mentor. Uh, I think Matt Seidel is a mentor. Basically, a two o five live match there. During the match, Jim Ross. Oh, eventually these two men are going to grow. They're going to fill up. They're going to fill out. In other words, someday they, they're going to get muscle eventually kind of deal, you know. Usually in WWE, the men are ready before they arrive on the show, you know, with the exception of Dominic or whatever. <laughs> AEW have like 40 Dominics who aren't physically, uh, you know, who aren't really ready physically to be on television. This was a match like this, there. Four guys who shouldn't be on television <laughs> or whatever. And then the main event, folks, it was Pac versus Dax Harwood. Um, Pretty random for a main event there. One half of FTR versus the Gremlin or whatever. There they were having a good match. But it was like the, the commentary were trying too hard there. This is good wrestling. And the fans like this match. It was weird, you know. The fans are enjoying this. And that's one of our strengths here. In AEW, it's great wrestling. The best pro wrestling is here. They made it a point uh, several times in the night to let it be known that they had the best wrestling. And that doesn't just go for WWE. That goes for all the other garbage in the feds that y'all pretend to love. New Japan or whatever there. You know, they're making it a point to say that they're better than Impact and New Japan in the ring, stuff like this. So they're not just sharing the spotlight with the Indies anymore there. And that's basically what you got to do. You can't make it look like you're on the same level as Impact <laughs> that has no viewership. Impact is probably just as good as them. They're just... Less money or whatever. Less budget, folks. Well, impact sucks, folks. It's, um, I'm sorry. And then uh, um, this match, it was good 
Pack and Dax are wood, but then as soon as Pack grabs him in the submission, the other one quits right away. So it was a big letdown because they were having a good match, surprisingly, you know. And then it just ended in a shitty fashion. You might as well have a DQ finish. You know, they go out of their way not to do DQs. They're apparently great because they don't do DQ. What the fuck was this? Like, it's a dumb finish. You don't want to have a real ending. So he quits right away when he's barely grabbed in the submission. And on commentary, oh, this is smart because he has a pay-per-view this weekend. So he just quits even though he's not really finished. Since when do you present it like this? Like, you know what I mean? Maybe a heel commentator would say something like this there, but shouldn't we want to see a real finish, not just some cheap cop-out finish kind of bullshit? Like, so you had the potential for an okay match, and then you just fucked it, basically. And then Malachi Black comes out with Andrade and FTR. FTR, I guess they're officially a part of two stables now. They're standing there with Malachi, Andrade, and they're attacking uh, Pac, I think. And then the Lucha Brothers come out and Cody Rhodes comes out. And it looked like it took Cody a bit too long to come out. You know what I mean? He was running, you know, <laughs> barely getting any cheers or whatever. And it looked like it took him too long to get to the ring. He eventually got to the ring there. And it just looks weird and awkward now, Cody, ever since he started getting booed there. Things are just weird with him. And then you had the contract signing, Page and Omega. Um, not an amazing segment there, the talking. It was okay, you know what I mean? I thought Omega was doing better than Kenny on the mic there. Or Omega was better than Hangman, I mean. And then Kenny walks away, gives him a little sarcastic comment. He gets booze from the crowd, walks away. And then the cameraman hits Adam Page with the camera. And it was, it was Don Callis there with a fake beard and stuff. and. Uh, so that was good there. I enjoyed that part. Callis hitting Hangman with the thing and he was busted open. Does this look like a world champ? Does he look like a world, like he's ready to win a world championship? And honestly, he doesn't. Like, like I thought this segment was good. I liked what Don Callis did here. I like Don Callis because he's funny, I think. You know what I mean? Um, but um, Adam Page does not look like a world champ, folks. You know what I mean? Especially not in this segment either with like, dressed up like a cowboy. You don't see that anymore, guys, with a cowboy hat and a cowboy shirt, cowboy boots or whatever. This isn't, like, 1970s NWA or something, you know what I mean? Like, the guy hasn't really been established as a world champion guy, it's been a year of him doing some weird bad acting that he's depressed or whatever the fuck there. Kenny called it his insecurities, so that makes him look even weaker if that was what they were trying to portray. Apparently... Like, I don't even know what the story's supposed to be, but here's a hint. Apparently, he's been insecure, Adam Page. 
for a year and a half. So, you know, so does this make him look like he's a champion guy? I mean, you know what I mean? He hasn't done shit and, um, We'll see what happens at full gear, folks. But I thought the show was, a lot of it was shitty. Like, it was kind of okay there, but a lot of it was garbage. Overall, I wouldn't say it's a good show. So, thanks for watching, folks. And remember to subscribe today. Until next time, peace out.